Hey, we're all on camera. Hi, everyone. Um, thank you for sticking around for this special conversation and Q&A with film writer and director Aaron Kaliran calling in from France. Thank you, Aaron. I think it's three in the morning for you. And Libby Lenkinski of the New Israel Fund calling in from Brooklyn. Thank you both for being here. Thank you so much for having us. <laughs> um, Aaron and Libby, this is the closing night of the fourth annual Boston Israeli Film Festival. It's only our second in-person screening in two years. And um, we've been on our own kind of a lockdown here too, which we all know. Um, before I get started, Wes, can I get your help in, sorry, turning around the computer. I just want you all to see who's still in the audience with us tonight. This is a very full house for us. Um, so you can share some love. If we can all share love with Aaron. <laughs> Whoops, hold on. Hey, Boston. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> this is COVID seating, so we had to be. Oh, good. <laughs> Sorry. This is my first Zoom Q&A, so I'm not looking up there anymore. Um, so, um, short bios first and then we will talk. Libby Lenkinski is the Vice President for Public Engagement at the New Israel Fund, where she leads all aspects of NIF's public efforts in the United States. She also leads NIF's work related to arts and culture for social change in partnership with the Nathan Cummings Foundation. Prior to the New Israel Fund, Libby lived and worked in the Israeli nonprofit field for almost a decade for human rights organizations and documentary films, including Boudreaux and the Law in These Parts, new media initiatives like Plus 972 Magazine, and more. Welcome again, Libby. Thank you, Lisa. So nice to be with you. Iran, Iran, I can't believe you were only born in 1973 when I look at this bio that I had to make shorter. Your directorial debut, which we recently screened out of festival, is The Band's Visit, um, which I also saw on Broadway and feel very fortunate to have seen. This film, which you also wrote, garnered more than 50 awards. Your second film, The Exchange, screened in competition at the 68th Venice International Film Festival in 2011. Your third film, Beyond the Mountains and Hills, premiered at Cannes in 2016. Tonight's extraordinary film, Let It Be Morning, premiered at Cannes, a certain regard, just in 2021. It won seven Ophir Awards of the Israeli Academy. And I'm sorry, I, I skipped right over the 50 awards for the band's visit and eight Ophirs for that as well. Um, this film, Let It Be Morning, was Israel's official submission to this year's Academy Awards. And the new Israel Fund and Libby really helped spearhead that campaign. So Libby, let me start with you before we dive into the film. Tell us how the new Israel Fund got involved with this extraordinary film. Yeah, and about your work on social change in the arts. Happily, and I'll try to be brief. Um, and uh, well, I met Iran some, you can't hear me. Uh, I know, oh, it's not, we can't hear you. Um, I don't think that that's- Is it me? I don't think it's on my end. Maybe it's not ahead. you? No, 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 wait. Um, can somebody go find Wes for us? Aaron, can we hear you right now? I don't know, can you hear okay, me? Okay, so this is a thing. Um, <laughs> we will figure this out. Wes is coming. Hey, Wes. Yep. Wes is awesome. I just wanna give some appreciation to Wes and our crew Thank here. You. Thank you. Nobody wants that to happen. Thanks for rescuing us. Okay. Um, Oh so, oh, so Libby, you were gonna tell us, you started telling us, how did you get involved with Iran in this extraordinary film through the New Israel Fund? Um, well, we, we had a little bit of a setup, but it was a good setup because we were each told that we need to talk to each other by very close friends of both of ours. And so we were predisposed um, towards a collaboration already, but I met Iran um, ahead of the other Israel Film Festival in New York for Let It Be Morning. And um, 
We sat down before I had seen the film and Iran told me what had been going on with the film and Cannes and the Ophir Awards and said, I would like an Israeli organization, some Israeli entity that is not the government, um, but is an Israeli entity to embrace this film and be part of this and stand with the film. And um, having heard the story that he told me, and having experienced also through the media, uh, all of the kind of around the film, the fact that this is a film that's almost entirely in Arabic, mm -hmm. that has a superstar, almost all Palestinian Israeli uh, cast, and was the official Israeli submission to the Oscars just a few short years after Israel passed the nation state law, uh, in which Arabic was demoted from being an official language and when the kind of going zeitgeist is that racism against Palestinians is on the rise, that this film was in this position felt to me astounding. So Iran asked if there would be an Israeli entity and whether NIF would be that entity. And I, I jumped and said, yes. And then he said, well, wait, you haven't seen it yet. And so I went across the street and I saw the film for the first time. And then I found myself in a seat like the one that many of you are sitting in tonight, um, a really moved, really um, emotional and astounded. Um, and I think what intrigued me the most after seeing it was just how um, uncategorizable this film is, which I think may be Iran's trademark, actually, making things which are not easy to slot into pre-existing categories. Those are also, that's the kind of art that I love the most. And when you think about culture and art for social change, I think, I think one of the um, best case scenarios is that some song or some film moves you, creates a cognitive dissonance where suddenly the world is tilted slightly in a different direction and it makes you see things differently. And so for me, this film really did that. But frankly, even if it hadn't, um, I would have been excited for NIF to jump in and support towards the Oscars. I think these um, moments where something crosses the ocean are really important um, for all of us, for the work that we do, for consciousness raising um, and for change. So, uh, and it's been a real pleasure and like a true authentic honor um, to have had even just like a small touch to this film. Um, so that's, that's my story. <laughs> Thanks, Levi. Thank you, Libby. That was so beautiful. Um, Aaron, I want to congratulate you on all the richly deserved honors you've had with this film, with surely more to come. I know you're in France right now because there are theatrical openings everywhere, right? Yeah, it's going to open in France in two weeks, two weeks' time. Yeah. Um, this film really deserves a masterclass and I wish we had time to go scene by scene and um, metaphor by metaphor and symbol by symbol and dig in deep to everything. Um, but I just felt like it just moves you on so many levels and I appreciated the language of your filmmaking and how subtle the performances were. And we'll get more into language and symbolism and metaphor later, but I appreciated how you blended the personal with the political so beautifully and how we feel so much heart and heartbeats in this film. It's complicated, but we just care our hearts open more and more as we come to know the main characters in this film. Um, culminating in this last four minutes, which we must talk about before this Q&A is done. Um, it's one of the most powerful scenes I've ever seen. So I understand from a Libby that you're a writer at heart first and a lover of language. and. I wanted you to start, I think everybody here wants to know, how did you come to adapt Syed Kashua's novel? Syed, a Palestinian author with Israeli citizenship who writes in Hebrew, how did you, Iran, a Jewish Israeli filmmaker, come to get to tell this story and what drew you to it? And we can talk about <laughs> adaptation next. Uh, well, it started around uh, seven or eight years ago when uh, the producer of the film and Syed uh, asked to meet me and we had a meeting and in the meeting Syed basically said that he liked the band's visit and offered me to 
to take this project and uh, direct a film based uh, uh, on his second book. Uh, and <laughs> as you all know, especially living in the States, I mean, I knew that in the present discourse, this is a big no-no uh, on all. Uh, but uh, with all due respect to the big theories, there was still someone there who offered me a book, you know, and he's Palestinian. And for some reason, which I, I don't know why, he thought I would be suitable. So I need to consider this on, on, on the specific on the specific moment. I cannot just, you know, make a law, a general law, a generalization or anything. So and I felt that, and I, I read uh, a script that at the time I had wrote, and uh, and I read the book as well, and I felt uh, it was one of those stories that I could very quickly imagine an image to it. So, so in some in some way, my body, my thoughts, my imagination responded to 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 the to the book and to the film, and uh, but I did thought that uh, the, the adaptation should take a different form a little bit from the novel. I mean, at least to uh, at least to think at least thinking about the film that you know I I saw in the novel, and Syed in the, at a very early stage gave me a very free hand about it. He said, like, you know, you know what? Take the book and do what, what you feel like. And I was uh, sending him a version of the script once in a while, and I sent him the, uh, I sent him uh, cuts of the film, uh, like uh, the cut of the film and the final cut of the film. Um, and he was, I mean, along the way, he was very uh, a bit like stayed a bit away, you know, which was something I, I, I after having my own work adapted, I, I could understand in some way because there's something when someone else adapts your work, you need to somehow let go. I, I mean, it's you're either you're either close or either you take a step back, but it's very when you're a bit close, then you... So I was very... But I always kept in mind thinking that, you know, I want him to to like this film at the end of the day. And uh, I, I promised to myself two things. Is that, you know, one is that if I'm going into this minefield of identities, mm -hmm. theories, and, you know, then I'm... Then I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I will not go in shyly or or like in fear, in fear of hurting. Or I, I will, I will be there, you know. Uh, and and the second, and, and I will change whatever I feel like to change in the plot or whatever. But I will always stay loyal to the spirit of Syed, as I see it, the spirit that was in the book. And um, of course, when we finished the film, I was very anxious to, to hear what he would say, because obviously there were a lot of changes, but uh, he called back, said, you know, he liked it and blessed, you know, gave us the blessing. and. That was very important for me, and uh, I feel very uh, blessed to have this opportunity, which is basically a, a welcoming, you know, uh, and to and to have done this film. That's so beautiful. I mean, I can, of all the films you've made, does this have a special place for you for that reason, for that journey that you took? You know, I can You know, I like all my films. You know, they were all journeys. They mm -hmm. all took me somewhere. Uh, so, and they are close to my heart. But every one of them is like those, like having kids in some way. But everyone is a bit different and has his own <laughs> story. And and this one has. Uh, 
uh, a very close story to my heart because like slowly by slowly, the people came in and Juna Suleiman who casted the film, you know, she was my first, uh, I would say collaborator on this project. And I, you know, talked to her a lot and, and she brought, she was a casting director, but she brought her ex-boyfriend to play Sammy, you know, and he's not a professional actor, but this is Alex Bakri, who I was also, uh, had the, the opportunity to meet and really great guy. And uh, he's a film editor and, and, and it's kind of grew, grew slowly together to a kind of, a uh, project that was, I think, as far as I can see it, uh, I don't know if authentic is the word, but, you know, very, uh, uh, I don't know, I don't find uh, the word, but it came together like things should come together. <laughs> that it did. <laughs> Can you talk about your use of metaphor and symbolism in the film? There's so much from the doves that don't want to fly and the kites I associate with Jerusalem and my Palestinian friends and that feel like symbols for freedom. And there was a peace sign on the soldier's um, guitar and the walls that are physical and metaphorical. Can you talk about those? Were those in the book or those things you added? Uh, uh, well, it depends on the... Uh, the, uh, this, the, the story the story for example of the Palestinian uh, West Bank Walker was a very essential uh, uh, story in the book which was was very it was fascinating to me and was very brilliant I think of Syed the way he was you know in a very painful way depict the fact that you know there's something everlasting and internal in in the way every class is uh, besieging the, its lesser class or it, its lesser people. And there's like yeah. this constant uh, vortex of, uh, you know, walls going. And uh, so this, for example, it came from the book, uh, other, uh, the, the doves, I was, I was searching for in my head when I adapted the book. The book starts differently, but it, start, it starts uh, more slowly. And I want also I don't have the means to make uh, you know long films. I need to have it condensed uh, somehow. So I was searching in my mind to an image which I, I like in films to have an opening image which is emblematic of the whole film or. or uh, or oh, I really believe that in like building those little emblems, which like every piece should in some way tell the whole story and in some way will be also a link in the story. Um, so I, I, and I thought about it a lot and I didn't find one. At first I came close when I, I thought that maybe they're going to, it will start with a, a firecrackers in the sky that doesn't work like everybody's waiting and just we hear the sound of, you know, uh, fireworks, but we never see the colors. And then I was reading a book by a Catalan author, a very beautiful uh, book called The Circle of the Diamond by Mercedes Rodera. And it tells the story of, uh, of this marriage, like not very good marriage of, uh, and this very beautiful character of a woman who marries someone who's not really for her. And at some point, the guy is starting to grow those doves and she just hates mm. it. And, and it is just filth and dirt and, and she hates the sound of them. She, she hates everything about the doves her husband is growing. And I love this idea of those, those doves <laughs> in some way, it's not being metaphorical. It's in some way the demystification of, you know, it's the other process around. It's making the symbol what it really is. <laughs> it's, it's making the symbol, uh, you know, just an <laughs> animal who wants to eat and shit and, you know, <laughs> live a life somehow. <laughs> so, 
it's like it, it, this metaphors are actually sometimes the other way around it, it looks like a metaphor but it's not a metaphor it's just mm-hmm. actually filming the thing itself <laughs> um Libby any thoughts before I open to questions well I will just um pick up on that and and say that I think that um one of I think one of the things that makes for like a real um like cr- creative uh, masterpiece might be that for you, Iran, it feels just like a thing that caught your eye in the real life of the scene. Um, and though for audience, it carries so much meaning. And I think that, um, and I wrote, I wrote about this in an essay about the film um, that then inspired a whole bunch of conversations with random people about this point about that sometimes those metaphors and symbols are serving a function, whether it's intentional on your part or not, to tell people, to tell audiences, this is for you. You're on the inside. You're on the inside of this story. And I think that um, some of the symbols like watermelons, which have been really prominent in Palestinian art, kites, which have been really prominent in Palestinian resistance, um, may be caught, you know, sort of a part of the landscape, but I think that they also send a message, this is for you, this is your story, this, um, you're, you're part of this, and not just to the, not just to Palestinians, there's all kinds of more universal metaphors in the film as well that I think make us part of it um, from all kinds of identity, and it's a, it's an identity bender, which is part of mm-hmm. what I love, so that's another reflection on the metaphors that you asked about. For me, the kites was extremely powerful. I mean, I I was sobbing in that scene because of the number of times that I've been in protests in the West Bank where kites are flown, where people are, you know, breathing tear gas, being shot at and flying kites as a symbol of freedom and resistance. And um, so for me, that scene was like a a smack in a good way, um, in a painful way too. Thank you for sharing that, Libby. Um, that was incredible. Can we get some questions from all of you? Any questions for Aaron or Libby? Yes. Hi, yes. I, so I love that question. So this woman, oh, I do know to do that. Thank you. Um, so this woman was saying she loved your choice of music and she wanted to also know your choice of music for Sia's song Chandelier. <laughs> In Abed's okay. taxi with Sam. Yeah. Uh, well, first of all, it's just a great song and Sia is a great <laughs> artist. And, um, you know, I think I have this theory that it's only pop song that can really take you out of hell. I mean, other kinds of music, they can be more sophisticated, more deep. You can think with them, but if you're really hitting like the bottom, <laughs> you better have Sia in your mm-hmm. ears and, and not, you know, not the fifth symphony or something. You know, it's a... Right. It's like, you better have Sia, you better have those because they, so, uh, you know, just because I, you know, this film is, I thought about this film as some sort of darkness that closed on on, on, a, on a small place. You know, you can see that also the lights is kind of gradually diminished and everything. So it goes like down, down into this, uh, this uh, I don't know how you call it abyss or darkness and uh, so in this situation as I said you really need Sia for a second (laughs) you really need Sia I love that I was saying to you earlier these scenes feel like lifeboats in the movies and you even see the progression of Sammy and you know how by the end you know with Naima and Abed but then by the end he's really grooving with it um towards the end and we all are we keep it's like this bit of hope and it gets dashed at first and oh so that's a wonderful question um anyone else Yes. Hi. 
So this question was a question of language in that you are Israeli and the script is mostly in Arabic. And how did that all play out as you were writing the film and even directing, right? Um, I'm actually curious if you directed in English. Did that communicate well what you wanted to say? Yeah. Okay, perfect. Uh, well, first of all, I do speak Arabic, and uh, I've, I didn't read—I didn't write this script in Arabic. It's, by the way, just a little uh, un maybe unknown fact, but Said Kashua is indeed Palestinian, but he uh, he writes his book in Hebrew. So, uh, <clears throat> so in this, in on a strange on a strange twist of event. Me uh, as the Israeli Jew or whatever, I I had to like translate the the his book from Hebrew to Arabic. While he the Palestinian, while he the Palestinian wrote the original uh, script and uh, and not the script, also the script if I'm not mistaken, but the book in Hebrew. So just goes to show this. You know that in the middle, in the twilight zone, there's so many complex complexity of you know. Uh, so as, as I said, I do speak Arabic. Maybe not as good as I would have wanted to, but uh, I speak. I understand. But you know, I get asked this question so many times, and I, I really think I want to say I'm not sure language is that important in in directing as as funny as it may seem, because sometimes when you are not completely fluent in language, I mean, I trust the actor in a way, you know, the way he's, he's, the word is in his mouth. I mean, he's, he would know how to say the word. So I can, I can find myself looking at some deeper things because of, of the intention or the intensity or many other things that are important in direction and they are not necessarily the language. And again, you know, it's one of those funny questions because nobody, when, uh, I don't know, a Czech director, he goes to direct a film in the United States, like Milos Forman, for example, okay? So <laughs> nobody asked him, hey, but that's not your language. <laughs> how, will you, how will you do it in English? Of course, that's because there is this notion that US is the world, yes? <laughs> but it's happening all the time that directors, or oh, you would have, you know, directors from Europe directing uh, superhero movies and everything. That's not the language. Uh, but you're always getting asked this when the other language is not English. <laughs> Maybe because it's Israel-Palestine somehow. Um, we have just maybe time for one short question, which is just far too short. Um, do we have one more? Thank you. It's a question for Iran. Iran, you said when you read Sayyid's book, you immediately had images. You were able to visualize what the film would look like. How closely did the final product correspond to those initial visualizations? Thank you, Ken. Um, that was kind. So the question was, when you first read Syed's book, and by the way, Syed Kashua, many of you might have seen the series Arab Labor. He wrote that, and he has also done some editing, some consulting and script work on Shtisel, the series. Um, so anyway, the question was, so you read Syed's book, and how did you adapt it? What it's a big question, but how did you change it? I wish we had more time for the long answer, but Oh, what? oh, I missed it. I'm no, sorry. No, Ken. no, I, I got the question. But he no said he didn't get it. I didn't. <laughs> no, I got it. You heard I got it? it. Yeah, yeah, I, I, you heard yeah, it. I heard okay. it. Okay, that's yeah, our it, president of it, our was, If I'm not mistaken, the question was how close the final film is to the images I had in my head while I read the uh, science book. Thank you. Sorry, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, it's not as if I saw the only bit, but I saw the first image was this green uh, uh, meadow, meadow it's called, like grass, yeah. yeah, meadow. And that is like blocked with, uh, but very uh, pastoral, very quiet, very beautiful, blocked with, you know, a wall. 
And I think it's quite close to the ending shot of the film in some way. So I think it's definitely is there. And I had the image of, you know, a candle at night. And I think you could feel this atmosphere of, you know, a man holding a candle at night somewhere. Uh, so, uh, I, I mean, you know, it's not, I'm not doing animation, so I cannot really copy, but I think in, in the best uh, abstract way, it's really, yeah, what I felt, how, you know, the image that I kind of seen. <laughs> Libby, did you want to say something? Um, I, I, I could pick up what, just and share that um, in the past when I've mentioned, I, I've mentioned that Said Kashua worked on Stissel and twice when saying that the, a person said, oh, I didn't realize that there were Arab characters on Stissel. And then I had to say there aren't, you know, because mm -hmm. Syed is a writer and can write all different kinds of things and Back to language. write an emotional storyline and not um, only pigeonholed into an identity character. So that's just a small anecdote. Um, if if we're closing, then um, mm -hmm. I would love to um, to thank you, Lisa, for your generosity and enthusiasm and the Boston uh, Film Festival as well. Um, and oh, also, thank you. <laughs> and also, um, I know that there are some some folks that we know we can't really see the audience. So um, I I am so happy that you got to see this film tonight and that we could share it with you. Um, and so that's just a, a quick thanks from me. Um, and I wanted to share that before we closed. Um, I'm sure Iran would like to say something too. Yeah, I'd just like to join in on the thanks for everyone and the audience especially. I appreciate it very much. And uh, just I'll say what I always say, if you liked the film, <laughs> just... We, you know, say something about it because at the end of the day, we want people to watch it. Tell your and friends, will... post on social media. <laughs> yeah. So wait, just one quick one. This is great. Um, tell us, is it opening theatrically here? How do we follow you? It's going to open theatrically. Uh, Cohen Media are releasing it, but I'm not sure. I don't think they have set uh, okay. the release date yet, but I'm sure they'll make it known. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much.